I'm Robbie Deans, and you're watching USA Rugby Wrap Up. <laughs> no USA. There's no USA. Here, okay. watch. Brought to you by our friends of the British Council. Hey everybody and welcome back to Rugby Wrap Up here in New York City at the Fantasy Sports Network Studio 34. I'm Matt McCarthy and we are talking rugby, rugby, rugby. And we're talking Major League Rugby. That's right, rugby in America. Goddamn America. And I got no, none other than a great American calling in from the West Coast for a Major League Rugby recap. We'll have some predictions and we'll also have post-game interviews with some of the bigger names on the Glendale Raptors. But first, let's go to the biggest name in this studio, Mr. Ronan Nelson. Ronan, welcome. Thanks for having me on, Matt. All right, kid. Uh, it's always a pleasure to have you, and I know that you know rugby better than I do. So I do my best. I'm just excited to be able to talk about Major League Rugby. That's right, Major League Rugby, right in your backyard, because you are, I understand, handling the Twitter for the San Diego Legion. Is this correct? I help out with social media and do whatever I can. All right, let's get to your recap. We had some some pretty cool matches. None of them were a 55-0 blowout, right? So we had Seattle hold on against uh, a plucky San Diego Legion squad, your, your, your boys. Uh, I was in Denver at Rugby Town USA for the match with the Glendale Raptors and the Texas team, the Austin Elite, who... Uh, had a three-man advantage at certain points in the second half to make it very exciting, but uh, Glendale did hold on. And then you had uh, the Nola Gold knocking off the Houston Sabercats. Who saw that coming? I'll tell you who saw that coming. Paul Barford saw that coming. And I guess uh, Nola Nate knows, right? Nate Osborne, the coach of Nola, who predicted that his team would run the table right on this very show. Well, I want to start off with that that Saturday matchup to begin Major League Rugby. New Orleans absolutely shocking the Major League Rugby world and pulling an upset over Houston. New Orleans was absolutely dominant across the pitch, especially in their scrum. It was really, really amazing to see that strong Houston scrum get battled back. I was there for a preseason match against San Diego in San Diego and Houston just walked all over the San Diego pack. So it was really good to see New Orleans be able to take that part of Houston's game out of their game plan and uh, move forward and be able to take on this Sabercat side that's had 13 preseason matches, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I guess 13 is an unlucky number if you're Houston, right? <laughs> I guess so. Nolan Nate knows we're going to have t-shirts printed up here on rugby wrap up. Nolan Nate knows that's Nate Osborne because he's the one with that prediction. But the other match, the one that I was at, what did you think of that one? I thought that one was more straightforward. Glendale was a strong team coming into this matchup already. Austin has had their preseason issues trying to figure out what kind of style they want to play. And so Glendale really had the advantage from the very beginning. They looked strong in all facets across the pitch, and their back line was just absolutely tantalizing. That's the right word to say. They have a lot of potential going forward in this season. Austin do as well. There was a thundering try from Hanku Garamases that should make try of the week. Uh, they have a lot of potential, especially now signing Todd Clever. If he finds good form, then he'll be able to lead that Austin Elite side through the rest of the season. Yeah, you had a you had a crafty uh, veteran bench in in that uh, Austin Elite squad, and you also had a sprinkling of fresh faces from here at Rugby United New York across the board. Uh, you had them uh, Dylan Fawcett playing for Glendale Raptors. You had Ross Deacon and Mike Brown go to Austin Elite. But you had Pedri Vonnenberg and Todd Clever in an Austin Elite uniform. That, that's pretty cool. And the one thing that, uh, that stood out for me was the fact that the Suniola brothers, Roland and Andrew, were just like wrecking balls in the back line for Austin. Yeah, Andrew was the captain of this Austin Elite side, and he gets to play alongside his brother. They're two wrecking balls in the center. Both of them has international experience, and they're able to play off of each other really well, along with their forward pack which has been iffy at times I think they'll be able to overcome with Mason Peterson as Austin's tight head prop they have a good amount of direction but they still need to figure out their cohesive unit especially on set pieces they had a few problems there 
So as the season moves along, they'll be able to figure that out. But for now, they're going to have to do it quickly because they're coming up against strong opposition. Yeah, they got a French coach uh, who has speaks a little bit of English in Austin and a bunch of internationals. It's it's just the uh, the international flavor of rugby is so great. That's what that's what this whole thing is about. And these guys are coming together within like three days, right? Both sides and all the teams are still have a lot of moving parts. None more so than arguably San Diego. Yeah, San Diego had their problems going into the week. The team wasn't able to release its lineup until the day before the match because there hadn't been a set roster going into the week. Their tight head prop, Aaron Mitchell, is coming off of a few seasons at Fresno State playing football. They've got Drew Gaffney, who's another San Diego product who they had to sign up because they had too many injuries. Uh, number nine, Nate Augsburger, the San Diego captain, was injured going into the week. So they've had a lot of problems on the injury front. Uh, okay, so Ronan, we're going to take a quick break because we're getting uh, we're getting told we have to take a break to pay some bills. But we're going to come back, and we're going to come back, and we're going to see some post-match interviews from Rugby Town USA and get predictions from you, Steve Lewis, and yours truly right after this. I've been blind since I was four, and I've never seen a beer commercial or a beer label. None of that stuff influences me. I drink beer because of the taste, and my beer is Pabst Blue Ribbon. It has the taste and the flavor. What do you think's on the label? I think there's a, a naked woman riding on a unicorn, jumping over fire. Oh, that's good beer. Hey, what you happen to know what time it is there? Excuse me, I'm listening to Rugby Wrap Up. Hey, everybody, welcome back to Rugby Wrap-Up. Matt McCarthy in New York at the Fantasy Sports Network with Mr. Ronan Nelson on the horn calling in from San Diego. We're talking Major League Rugby. We just had our recap. Now we're going to get into predictions. But before we do, Ronan, we've got some post-match interviews on the pitch down in Glendale in Rugby Town, USA. Let's check those out first. Hey everybody, Matt McCarthy here in Rugby Town, USA, on the road here in uh, Glendale, Colorado, in Infinity Park with a guy that looks just like Dylan Fawcett of Rugby United New York. So do you have anything that might, are you, are you Dylan Fawcett? I am indeed, yeah, I am indeed. It's a bit of a trip over there on Monday from New York, but uh, I'm happy to be here. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just kidding, of course, Dylan, uh, but you just ended the exhibition season with Rugby United New York. Now you signed a contract with the team that's actually in the in the setup this year, the Glendale Raptors just had a big win against the Austin Elite, who put up a good fight. Oh, absolutely! Like the, you know, they put it backs against the wall there, Matt. You know, we definitely didn't need to get down, you know, two men there towards the end. But you know, I'm really happy how we, we stuck it in and we, you know, we really put in a good fight there at the end. You know, really proud of the boys. You know, and awesome credit to them. It was a great performance from them. So it's been quite a role for you here in the United States. You've recently been capped as an Eagle. You play with Rugby United New York in a sold-out Gaelic Park. Now you're here at Rugby Town USA, Rugby Heaven on Earth. What's the experience been like? Oh, the experience has been amazing. You know, listen, I just I tried to be the best I can possibly be, try to play the top rugby I can. You know, so it was it was so important for me to get out here, and I'm so happy to get the opportunity to play with Glendale here in the MLR. I mean, look around, it's absolutely fantastic atmosphere, and I'm so grass. happy to be here. Grass, oh, it's a beauty. <laughs> it's an absolute beauty to be on grass again. Absolutely. So, what was your uh, what was your favorite moment out of that game today? Uh, listen, just towards the end there when we were. You know, we we held them out in the scrum, you know, and we kept they kept coming at us through the middle. Like, I mean, in fairness, if you're going to, if they're going to score anywhere, it's going to be out wide. And I was pretty happy with our all the boys fronted up, and it was great, great performance towards the end there. Now, as soon as you came in the match, you came off the bench. I think there was a kick right to you, right? Yeah, <laughs> get you right right into the right into the mix. You know me, Matt, nose to the ball, nose to the ball, straight into it. You know, no messing. Well, Enjoy. I'm very happy for you, my friend, and continued success. And we uh, we'll be watching you. No, oh, thanks very much. Hey everybody, back on the pitch down here at Rugby Town, USA, with the man, the myth, and the legend. That is John Quill. John, great match, great environment, Major League Rugby. Yeah, this is your second go round in professional rugby in the United it is. States. Uh, yeah, I think we're gonna. I think this go round's uh, gonna be a, a lot more successful. Um, great turnout today. 
Um, definitely exciting with only 12 men on the field at the end of the game. Made life hard for ourselves. but Keeps the fannies in the seats. It definitely does, yeah. Uh, a lot of people that I've spoke to already enjoyed it, so hopefully they keep coming out and uh, hopefully we keep 15 men on the field going forward. Uh, but yeah, uh, exciting going forward and uh, looking forward to the next one. So, John, for the folks at home that don't might not know this, you've had a pretty good run here in the United States is in rugby. You played in the World Cup for Team USA in 2015. Yeah. Uh, you've now had the two iterations of professional rugby under your belt. Yeah. What has been the most challenging thing for you as a player? Um, well, I mean, it's probably been... I mean, we're lucky enough that we're at the startup of professional rugby over here, but there's a lot of things that still need to, to be done right. Um, so, that, I mean, that's difficult, but exciting at the same time. So it's got its ups and downs for sure. But I think we're going in the right direction here with this new league. MLR seem to be doing all the right things, ticking the boxes. Um, so, yeah, that's... Been... And you were a Sacramento Express guy. I was, yeah, for my sins. <laughs> yeah, so... A little bit of different stadium, right? For sure, this yeah. is the, got the grass, it's yeah. got the environment. I mean, that's that's what makes a difference. What? Irish weather. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> yeah, I wasn't complaining. There was a lot of people complaining today. I wasn't one of them. Yeah, I wasn't either. Um, no, yeah, so I mean, when you plonk with the pro, you plonk a few teams here, there, and everywhere and expect it to be successful. That's just not going to happen. When you back a community, back a facility like this, good things are going to happen, you know? Well, I've seen a transition in you from the outside where you're smiling a lot more these days yeah <laughs> i guess not so. as much of the struggle right it's no. getting a little you, you know you because it's not easy declaring that you're going to be a professional rugby player when there's no professional setup right and you were doing that yeah yeah no for sure you, there's a lot that has to happen behind the scenes to, for you to be ready for these opportunities so i've been doing that and i guess i'm getting a little bit older maybe a little wiser so i'm starting to smile a bit more enjoy it a little bit more yeah, take it in yeah you, you, sure. you, you had the opportunity to play against some teammates yeah. from various setups the eagles right right that pro pro setup was there a little extra incentive there you, you guys hit each other a little harder or um, you say how you doing as you're, you're yeah you're, you're I, stepping up with your thumb in the eye or? maybe a little bit of that <laughs> um no that's that's a fun aspect of it because i mean week in week out there's guys that you've played with or against and you, you know them so that I guess you maybe not hit each other more, but there's definitely maybe a little wink in the bottom of a yeah, rock or yeah, whatever yeah. it is. But yeah, that's 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 definitely enjoyable. All right, well, my friend, uh, go enjoy the aftermath of this. This has been a great event. It's history. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Who knew that uh, Austin was going to get out to the seven nothing lead to start? Yeah. I'm you know I'm predicting 36-15 in favor of you guys. Thinking. It's true what people say about me. I don't know a thing about rugby. <laughs> and uh, fortunately, you proved them wrong. Yeah. And uh, That's one rugby. more day I live because of you guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Hopefully, I mean, as I said, we made it difficult for ourselves. But any day you put 40 points on the board is a good day. Lots to learn from, but a lot of positives as well. Uh, before I let you go, any possibility that we're going to see you drop goal uh, during a match just for the hell of it? <laughs> um, uh, you need definitely more than 40 points on the board before you see me get a drop call. So it's not a no, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> it's not a no. You heard it here first. Breaking news. Rugby wrap-up on the road with Mr. John Quill here in Rugby Town, USA. Thank you, my friend. Hi, boss. The captain of the Glendale Raptors, the victorious Glendale Raptors, yes, Major sir. League Rugby Raptors, Sean Davies. Sean, big win out there. Yeah, win is a win, as they say. Um, I mean, they tested us towards the end. I'm very proud of the boys. We played 10 minutes uh, with 12 guys. Yeah, did so. you guys know that you're allowed to play with 15? Um, that was the plan going into it, but, uh, you know, it's the, the roll of the dice, I guess. So, we'll see how it goes. We're definitely a couple gonna, of cards here and there. We're definitely going to be testing our depth for the next couple of weeks, so we'll see how it goes. Well, I tell you what, the cards actually helped because it made that match a little bit uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah, I mean... A little adversity always helps to overcome it. And, I mean, like I said, the last few minutes the guys came together. I thought the defense was really good. I don't think Austin went through us once. So they only beat us around us, beat, it went around us. And when you have 12 guys, that's bound to happen at some time. So. That can't happen, Sean. Yeah, it definitely can happen. So, <laughs> yeah. I mean, a lot to work on. We're going to watch this and, yeah, hopefully come back a lot better next week. So, um, comparatively speaking, Pro Rugby USA, Major League Rugby, well, this, you got both under your belt. The scary thing is that I played in an opener two years ago in Glendale when there was more snow on the side. So, yeah, yeah no, this is, this, I think there was must have been a decent number here today in the snow. So thanks to all the Glendale people that came out. We're expecting even more people on Mother's Day. So thank you very much. Well, 
thank you because I see what you're doing with the kids. You're signing yeah. autographs. You know, it's all about the community here yeah. in Glendale. And rugby in the United States needs that to grow, and you guys are doing a great yeah. job. I mean, it's all part of it. It's all, I mean, as the players, we invested this. We want the league to be around here for X amount of years, and in order to do that, we need people to come back. So the more people we can come here and let them have a great experience, they tell uh, all their friends, so more people come. Uh, I got a trivia question for you, though. Oh, no. The first put in in professional rugby uh, history here in Glendale uh, by a scrum half was by whom? I'm um, Sean Davies. <laughs> Ding, ding, ding. Yes. Circle gets the square. Yes. Sean Davies, you get a uh, lead press on nails and some rice aroni, the San Francisco treat. Good day. All right, my Thanks, friend. Man. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Really have a good time tonight. That. Will McGee, not Will Maggie, as we have butchered his name repeatedly on Rugby Wrap-Up, sir. Uh, after that performance, we'll never forget the pronunciation of your name. Uh, yeah, uh, it was a tough one. The boys had to grind it out. Um, obviously... Playing rugby with 12 guys at the end there is not what we come want. Come on, what's it? Come on, you got 12 guys. I know, but to be honest, we still scored what 17 points in the second half. Boys really like dug deep. Um, How you doing, guys? And yes, uh, not the way we wanted to start the season, um, but we're happy to get the five points. So, so will I ask Sean Davies about this? What's the difference between this setup and the Pro Rugby USA setup? Because you are a veteran, a grizzled veteran yeah. of professional rugby here in the United States. I mean, it felt pretty similar today on day one of uh, April, around third weekend of April with the snow coming down. But there weren't four <laughs> drop tries by the opposition. There was a couple drop ones, but they were still counted as tries. Uh, no, I mean, I think it's awesome. All the teams are really buying in. I think this league is going to be so much more competitive than Pro Rugby was, where you saw a big gap between kind of the top two teams and then the next three teams. As you can see today, I mean, a lot of people were predicting Austin to get blown out and it was a really tough game and um, full credit to them they came out and made us work really hard for 80 minutes so. yeah they made you know they, they proved how much how little I actually know <laughs> they race out to the lead they go into the shed they come back they retool a couple of bodies drop for you guys and we had an exciting match yeah it was really exciting um, probably for the crowd more than the players on there it felt like we were playing a game of sevens getting yeah. ready for the World Cup in the, in the summer but hey uh, full credit to are you boys. alluding to something is this breaking news are you playing sevens in the World Cup uh, I would be the last person that Mike Fry <laughs> Day would be looking at I think it's not my skill set um, but no it's great great determination by the guys awesome to get a couple of new faces in with Butcher and Figgy over and they're still getting used to how we're trying to play here so we're only going to grow as a team week on week now so well, I'll tell you what just witnessing what you were doing off camera signing autographs for the kids that's going to grow the game and, and really get this thing going yeah absolutely and like no better place than Glendale here we got that awesome fan zone it was a shame about the weather but I mean uh, by all accounts it was oh, this, is, this, is, this, is, uh, this is Saturday in, uh, Saturday in July in Glasgow oh yeah <laughs> Or London, yeah, exactly. So I was kind of used to it. I'm not sure Figgy straight off the plane from Sydney and Hong Kong was very happy about it, but uh, no, it was. It was Neither a was a day. team called Austin. <laughs> yeah, but a great day. Uh, and yeah, it's awesome to have so many fans here signing autographs and stuff. So. All right, you go get to that. That's more important than talking to the likes of me, but I appreciate it, my friend. Thank you very and, much. And uh, Will Maggie. McGee. Just, just kidding. Will McGee, rugby wrap up at McCarthy on the road in Rugby Town, USA. All right, that was pretty cool, Ronan. And each one of those guys has pro rugby USA experience as well. Not to mention that Will McGee and Sean Davies both featured in this America's Rugby Championship for USA Rugby. So those are a strong group of guys. And John Quill, of course, is always on the Eagles' radar. He was with the World Cup team in 2015. He is a beast of a man, but it was great to see him smiling because John Quill has had it tough as, as anybody here trying to make it in rugby, and he's... Uh, He's, 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 uh, he seems to be at the top of the mountain and, and actually enjoying it. It's exciting to see where he can go. He's a good product, and I think if he maintains form going into this Major League Rugby season, he'll be on Gary Gold's radar for good going into the World Cup season. And, an, and another great positive was seeing Gary Gold in Denver, and then he flew to Seattle. So we got the head coach of Team USA going to the professional matches. It's all good, man. Not to mention for some of the newer guys that are playing rugby for the for the first time in a professional setting, like a lot of the guys on the San Diego team that were in Seattle, it's their first time to get looked at by a national team head coach. So hopefully they didn't feel the nerves too much. That's right. And it was also, I got, that's right. And also I want to point out that uh, Matt Hawkins, the general manager, if you will, of the San Diego Legion, who I think should be playing rugby was in Denver 
in Glendale, Colorado, and then flew out that night to go to his match. So you got guys floating around, scouting out. It's great. But we are basically out of time, so we got to get to predictions. I'm going to read a statement, ladies and gentlemen, from Steve Lewis as per his predictions. Uh, he says, in the Texas Derby, which, if I'm not mistaken, is going to be a dire stadium in Houston, their second home match in a row, he says... He'll take the Sabercats to get back on track and win 25-15 over Austin. And then he says in Glendale, about Glendale versus Seattle, he says Glendale will go to the Pacific Northwest and silence the rowdy Seawolves fans in a squeaker, 33-30. to That's 63 points on the board. In the other match, he says unless your legion sorts out their set pieces and game management issues. He's taking the Warriors 28-22. And the Warriors, of course, of course had a, an exhibition friendly against the uh, Prairie team, up the Prairie Wolfpack from Canada. Well, I don't exactly agree with Steve Lewis on every one of these matches. For the Texas matchup, I have Austin squeaking through by three points. I, I don't see it going any other way. I think this first Texas matchup is going to go to the team with the most momentum. And even though Austin lost against Glendale, I think their late surge at the end of that last match against Glendale will push them through on the road in Houston. In the second match, I'm going to go with Glendale. They were absolutely physically dominating against Austin for 55 minutes of that match on Saturday. I think they're going to go into Seattle and do exactly what Steve Lewis is saying and silence that rowdy Pacific Northwest crowd. Then my mystery matchup of the week is this San Diego versus Utah matchup. We don't exactly know what's going to happen because we don't know who's going to feature for San Diego, and we don't actually have a very good idea of what Utah is going to look like. I'm going to be at the San Diego homer and have them squeaking through. It's going to be a squeaky bum time match, but it's a toss-up. Did you say squeaky bum time match? Yes, I did. Sir Alex Ferguson, the famous Manchester United manager for years, described many of those 1-1, 1-0 matches as squeaky bum time for all those fans that are moving about in their seats. Okay. All right. Well, you learn something every day here on Rugby Wrap-Up. Okay, so yours truly, to wind up our segment, is going to go with Glendale, San Diego. And I hate to say it, but I got, I got Austin at home. Anyway, uh, on that one, Ron, I want to thank you, my friend, for coming on. Thanks a lot, Matt. It's always fun being able to talk about professional rugby in the United States. I didn't know I would be able to say that phrase anytime soon. All right, my friend. And on behalf of Mr. Ronan Nelson and the absentee uh, Steve Lewis, I'm Matt McCarthy for Rugby Wrap-Up talking Major League Rugby here in New York City in America. Signing off.